Uh, hopefully this fixed it. Um, we will see soon enough. Um, I might have to make the quality a little bit worse just to meet with the demand of the stream. So we will see soon um, if it will work out. Uh, so far, so good. It looks pretty smooth. Um, they're both uh, sideboarding, and it looks like Dylan is looking to possibly bring in Thrag Tusk. I'm not sure what that's going to do. Um, Coalition Relic is a cool card. Chalice of the Void for two. Um, well, it doesn't beat the Quarter Calling, though, or the Collected Company. That, this deck is really resilient to counterspells. Or, uh, counterspells like that, anyways. Yeah, the Ley Lines aren't great. I can't tell what that card is in the back of his sideboard. Uh, Carter, though, is knows exactly what he needs to do. He came in that prepared. Looks like he's asking a question, maybe, about Phyrexian Revoker. It might be a foreign language one. Uh, the owner of that deck uh, likes to use foreign language cards, which are pretty rad. And it looks like it's still a little choppy. Um, please comment if it is, uh, so I can try to fix it, which I'm, I'm not sure what to do. The frame rates are pretty high. Uh, it's so, we will see. Thank you to everybody watching. We're Hometown Hobbies, uh, streaming Modern f and tonight, and tomorrow we will have our Star City Games Invitational Qualifier, Preliminary Pro Tour Qualifier. I'll throw that information up on the screen in case you're in the area and you can possibly make it. Um, it's going to be $30 entry, 25 if you played tonight, so if you played tonight and somehow you're watching this, uh, yeah, you get an awesome $5 off tomorrow. Um, and it's going to start at noon. We open at 10. Should have a decent amount of the singles that you will need. Um, there's some things we're sold out on, but... You know, for the most part, we have a decent modern collection. They're going to go to the pile shuffle stage, it looks like. And I'm sure Dylan will play first. Uh, he's definitely looking to open up with Amulet of Vigor. As if you have not seen this deck function, Amulet of Vigor will be a treat for you to watch. Uh, he will more than likely be able to cast a turn 2, possibly if his hand's right, or a turn 3 Primeval Titan. Um, and then possibly just attack and win on turn 3. Uh, depends on if he has two amulets or not, or uh, he might not even need two amulets, so... We'll see. Uh, Carter, on the other hand, is trying to do what he did last game, possibly run out of pack rat. If he, I think it's a one of, but uh, it might go up to a two of after this. And if you haven't, please uh, like the Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at Hometown Hobbies. It is really, really awesome. Uh, we post all the new magic info. And um, all of our tournament stuff. We have some of the biggest tournaments in the area. It looks like he drew an Ancient Stirrings, a Green Bounce Land, a Green Bounce Land, and a Cave. Um, ca or ca not a Cave, a Cavern of Souls. And he mulliganed. Uh, I guess that that's a mulligan that you have to pretty much do. He's not interactive until really turn turn three he can cast his Ancient Stirrings. So that is not the best hand. He didn't have an amulet, unfortunately, so he's going to ship it back. It looks like Carter actually had texted me and asked if they were good to start forever ago, and I just got that text. So, yes, Carter, you guys can go ahead and start, and it looks like you're in the middle of game two. And Zach is on the play, and he's going to look at his six. He opened with uh, Simeon Spear Guide. He's playing that to possibly um, possibly just play a Primeval Titan or an Azusa on turn one. 
I'm pretty sure that's what he said he does with it. Uh, so he's going to leave a Sun home and pass, which is, I think, an awkward play for Carter. Or, it, it shows an awkward play from Dylan's part to Carter. So Carter just plays a tapped Godless Shrine. Uh, Dylan draws a second Simeon Spear Guide. And he might just run out this, if that's a Gruel Turf, this Gruel Turf bouncing back his Sun home. Double Spirit Guide and Hive Mind and maybe two Mana Morphos. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what that is. That is that's, a, that's a little weird to me. I can't, I can't imagine it's that. Is that a Thrag Tusk? Ancient Stirrings? Uh, something. <laughs> he's going to draw for turn. It looks like Carter has an Anafenza in hand. And he's going to pay one at least. Going down to 19 to cast the Anafenza. He might just actually go down to... 17 and grab a Temple Garden. Yep, Temple Garden. Alright, so he's going to go to 17. And he's going to have out his Anafenza, and he might just try to uh, do something next turn. I'm not sure if he'll be able to combo off, though. Um, but he will be able to make big creatures. Uh, so, if he plays a birds, the birds will be a 1-2 flyer instead of a 1-3, etc. And Dylan's going to play a gemstone mine and immediately tap it for a green, I believe, to Ancient Stirrings. And that's going to resolve. Carter is being very much unlike himself and not playing blue. Uh, Carter is definitely a blue mage. Uh, Dylan takes the Simic Growth Chamber, which is the blue-green bounce land from Ravnica. Those lands come into play tapped, provide green and blue, or whatever color combination. And in order to play the land and not sacrifice it, you have to bounce one of your lands or return one of your lands back to your hand. Um, with Amulet of Vigor, they come into play untapped, so you can do a lot of bounce shenanigans with the tapped lands, replaying tapped lands with extra land drops from Oracle, Moldaya, Azusa, and Summer Bloom. Um, a lot of a card, Summer Bloom, uh, a lot of people speculated would be banned. Uh, so he's going to play Tide Hollow Sculler, and if he wants, he could sacrifice the Sculler in response to the trigger. Or no, he doesn't have a way to sack it. Ignore me. Ignore me. He doesn't have a Viscera Seer in play. I just assume that if you have one piece of the combo, you have all pieces. Uh, so Tide Hollow Sculler is going to come down and he's going to look at his hand, and we have a Summoner's Pact and a. That was it. That was the only one I didn't know. If I was Carter, I assume he will take the Pact or the Hive Mine. Uh, the Hive Mine is the scarier card of the two, but next turn uh, he would be able to play a Primeval Titan with the Summoner's Pact, so it's either you let him resolve the Pact or you let him resolve the Hive Mind, and both of which are not very good for Carter. You could take a Simeon Spirit Guide to set him back a turn, but I don't think that's very good. So, Carter's going to think hard about this one because it is a decently tough choice, and he goes with the Hive Mind, and I think that is the safe bet. He's going to let him attack him if he really wants to, and he is okay with that. And he's going to get in there for three, knocking them both down to 17. Dylan's going to draw. <laughs> and I assume he's just going to Pact into Primeval Titan. I'm not sure what else he is thinking about doing. Um... Yeah, so he's going to Summoner's Pact, and Carter says that that resolves, that's fine. He's going to more than likely grab Primeval Titan. He might have a, a really awesome sideboard card that I don't see. Okay, yeah, Primeval Titan. But yeah, Summoner's Pact could grab a uh, really clutch um, creature out of your sideboard, like a Citic Slime. Citic Slime there would have been pretty brutal, I feel. Uh, getting uh, rid of the black-white or the green-white source, either one. Uh, but instead he's going to play the best creature, Primeval Titan. And... Did he just say pass? Oh, okay. <laughs> that was a little weird. 
Um, so he's going to get a die to mark his Summoner's Pact on top of his Library card or be the helpful opponent and reminding him to get his die. And unfortunately my chat is not loading on my uh, thing, so I'm going to have to try to pull it up on the actual Twitch website in a minute, I believe. So sorry if it seems like I'm ignoring you, chat. Oh, it finally came up. I'm in the chat now. And he's going to grab Teleria West and a Simic Growth Chamber. And more than likely, the Growth Chamber is going to bounce back to Teleria West. Ooh, he's switching it up a little bit, it looks like. He might get uh, the Boros Land instead. And he does. Okay, so he's going to get Boros Garrison, which is the red-white bounce land. Um, and it will put the Teleria West back in his hand. Teleria West has Transmute. It comes into play, it's a land. It comes into play tapped and provides a blue. And you can pay one blue blue to transmute it to search your deck for any um, card with converted mana cost equal to it. So you can search your deck for a zero drop or a land or an artifact, anything that costs zero. Um, so in this deck, you usually grab um, a Summoner's Pact or a Pact of Negation, Slaughter's Pact, any of those. And Carter is just going to cord for, uh, looks like three, grabbing Kitchen Fings? Oh, Fulminator Mage to hit a bounce land. And that is going to get him off of green, and Carter just won by making him unable to pay his pact. And that is the game with a Fulminator Mage trick. Uh, that was a very, very, very fast game. Uh, faster than I was expecting. And I'm going to go get a hold of them and uh, see if I can get somebody else on camera because that was like 12 minutes worth of magic that we just watched. So uh, I will be right back, and I'm going to leave you with the... Star City Games IQ preliminary Pro Tour qualifier information up on the screen so you guys can see. Uh, I will be right back once again. So I'm back, and we have our next match ready to go. I have 